Hey guys, welcome back. Schizone episode 16 topic today is trigonometry. Quick preview. In this video, we're going to cover approximations for sine and cosine as well as tangent and arctangent. If that interests you, stick around. If not, I'll see you in the next one. It should be a pretty quick video today. So trig is an important part of math. Most of the math is a waste of time, but trig I would say is less so. Um, the only couple of functions that are important in trigonometry and that we're going to use in this series are these four. And if we need more, we'll code them up later. Um, but sine, cosine have their uses. All these functions basically relate a vector to its components and the angle that those components make with the vector. So yeah, that's kind of how this works. Um, in my opinion, a tan is the most important one. Arctangent, um, we'll use that a lot in this series. Um, but of course, sine and cosine have their widespread uses as well. Um, they're just the same function shifted and then tangent is just the ratio of those two together. So I think clear winner is a tan, but uh, to each their own. The question is though, how are these functions evaluated? Like if you open up MATLAB or you open up Python and you type in sine of 0.3, what's going on under the hood to give you that answer? Is there a lookup table? Like, do you, do you even know? Does anyone even know? Um, and of course, some people know, and there are a lot of ways to do it. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are fast, some of them are slow. Um, I would say, again, in this series, it's all about what makes the most sense to me that I can wrap my head around. Some of the the ways that people have come up with to compute or to estimate these types of things, it just blows my mind how cool, but also how like convoluted that implementation is. And so, no, we're not going to be using any fancy schmancy stuff. We're not going to be using any kind of hardware stuff that you could use. We're going to stick to tried and true Taylor series for three out of the four functions in this video. For the last one, I'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, Taylor series is basically a way to approximate a function of, around a point. You can see here function of x. Um, Basically, we're taking the derivative of that function a bunch of times at a different point, and based off the distance of that point from our point of interest, we're going to compute kind of like the the x the estimated value of the function. And so, yeah, it, it works pretty well, especially for functions that are periodic and that you can kind of pull in. For example, sine of a, a million pi, you can pull that in to the range plus or minus pi, right? Because it's a periodic function. Of course, yeah, there are other faster ways to do this, but we're not gonna use those in this video. Maybe in the future, maybe in a lab to come, we will implement some of the very cool approximations for these type of trigonometric functions. Um, I'm not gonna belabor this very much. Here is the expansion for sine, cosine, and arctangent. Um, so yeah, again, Taylor series is an infinite sum, so you're adding up terms. So you can see for sine of x, the first term of your approximation is just x. And if you only wanted one term, there's your first term. You may have heard the small angle assumption. Well, here it is, sine of x, the first term of Taylor series is just x. Similarly, small angle assumption for cosine is just one. As well as small, small angle assumption for arctangent, which is not really the same thing. Um, but whatever, it would be x. So yeah, but anyway, you're not gonna have one term. You're gonna add up a bunch of terms. The question is how many terms should we add up? Should we add up 10 terms, a million terms? How many is too many? You know, you have to value the, the error you're gonna get, right? Obviously the first term is not gonna capture the full, you know, definition of the function. So how many terms do you wanna add in before you say, hey, that's enough? And so I, honestly, there are a couple of good answers to that. You could say, well, I'm always gonna add up 10 terms and that's fine. And that's actually good because you don't have to constantly be checking anything. You say, well, I'm gonna do 10 iterations of this, um, you know, whatever you're gonna loop through in your assembly code to get these terms. I'm gonna do it 10 times and that's it. Always 10 times, that's fine. And that's actually very, very, very accurate because, you know, you'll see how fast this converges on the, on the next slide. But I would say what well, might be even better than always having a fixed number of terms that you're adding together, maybe you'd wanna say, well, I'm, 
I'm going to be okay with my, my program needs this sine of X to be within 0 0.01. I don't care if it's 0 0.000001 or 0 0.0001 or 0 0.0000001. It doesn't matter to me. I just need to be within, you know, a hundredth. In which case, you would want to implement a tolerance. And so the way that works is, again, each of these terms gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You kind of can see here the denominator is a factorial and the numerator is also raised to the power of a high number. And you plug in a number like, you know, 0.5. This, this shrinks and this causes to shrink. So this number gets smaller and smaller very quickly. So the question is, which term you, do you think would be, the, would be enough? And so basically, if you had a tolerance goal of 0 0.0001, like in this example for a sign of 0 0.5, well, if you plug in 0.5 to these terms, you kind of can begin to see just how quickly your approximation is converging. So the fourth term, is already 0 0.0000016. And so you're you're already well below your tolerance. So the way we're gonna basically do this is we're gonna say, I'm gonna keep adding up terms until the term I have just added up is below the tolerance. And if you implement it that way, you will never be beyond your tolerance from the correct answer. So yeah, that's how we're gonna basically terminate our infinite sum. Now, when it comes to tangent of x, I don't like the Taylor series approximation because it has this b in it. If you look on Wikipedia, this is b, which means it's a Bernoulli number. I'm not sure what that even means. It's too hard for me, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, we're going to stick with some other, perhaps worse, <laughs> uh, approximation for tangent, and that is what I've shown here is the partial fraction expansion for tangent of x, and here's what it is. That's simply it. You know that it has a little bit of weird stuff going on on this uh, left-hand side, but again, you can just divide away, and then you could manipulate your input to be divided by pi, and again, there are things you can do to make this make more sense, but this is the way you'll find the partial fraction expansion for tangent of x if you were to look it up. Honestly, that's it. That's the whole theory for this video. Um, in terms of code, we're going to go through the code right now very superficially. Um, we have two examples for sine and cosine, two for tangent, and then we have one example that covers arctangent. And I did implement in that arctangent example a polynomial estimate as well because we're going to use arctangent a lot in this series. And so it's nice to have the tried and true Taylor series method that we understand. And then also, polynomial approximation as well. Polynomials are easy to understand because again, it's just, hey, um, here is my estimate for arctangent or whatever the, it you know, here's my estimate for the polynomial of arctangent. So evaluate this point on that curve. It's very, uh, very simple. So the examples are all in example 16 in the suppository. So let's check out the first one. Actually, let's check out the code first. Do I have a... Yeah, so under our library of assembly functions, under math, under expressions, under trig, we have a bunch of these functions defined, arctangent, cosine, the sine, as well as tangent. I'm gonna go through the sine function that kind of gives you the idea for the rest of them. So for the sine function, you'll see that it's a function that returns a double precision floating point number and it takes in two doubles. The first double is the x, so sine of x, that's the x, and the second input and x and m1, that is the tolerance, as I mentioned before. And so you can see here the first couple lines of all the functions we're gonna do in this series are preserving registers. So you can see we're gonna use RCX, RDX, as well as a couple of floating point registers for this function and so we preserve them in the beginning and we recover them at the end and so this way our registers aren't going to be clobbered in the function it makes it a lot easier that way so the next thing that we do is we adjust our input so you'll note that well you should you should know that sine is a periodic function and it repeats over and over and over again and so you can very quickly pull in if someone passes in 
x equals 10 million, you can very quickly pull that in to the small range around zero, about which our Taylor series approximation is accurate. So that's the idea of this bit. I'm not gonna go through the code there, you can kind of figure it out, it's pretty simple. Um, we're basically getting the multiple of two pi that we are away, rounding down by that many two pies. Um, and then you can see here is get ready label. What this does is it pre actually prepares the Taylor series uh, approximation. And so if I go back to the sine of x Taylor series, if you look at these two terms, the difference between this term and this term is that you basically multiplied by negative x squared, and then you've changed the denominator. The numerator has just changed by a factor of negative x squared, and that's how it continues from term to term. And so, we're basically pre-computing that multiplier. So if you look back, you'll see here x of m10, I've computed that as negative x squared. So we can use that as we go from term to term in our uh, expansion. Then you can see here we are uh, computing the denominator, that factorial. We're, we're actually using RDX to keep track of the denominator. So it would be like, a, you know, we're going to multiply by terms over and over and over again. So that's how you compute factorials. And then RCX tracks the polynomial order. But anyway, long story short, we just compute every term and we check every term against the tolerance. Important thing to do though is to always make sure you're taking the absolute value because those terms change sign above and below zero. So always take the absolute value of your term before you can evaluate it against your tolerance because otherwise all negative numbers are below tolerance, right? If your tolerance is positive, it's not gonna work. So that's how that works. Um, at the end of the function, well, once we fall out of that function and we evaluate that we're below our tolerance, we pop everything back off the stack and return to the original calling function. That's how sine works, that's how cosine works, that's how arctangent works, it's all the same. The only difference would be with our tangent function. And in tangent, I told you before, we're not using the Taylor series approximation, we're using instead a partial fraction expansion, uh, but basically it's all the same stuff. We again, we, we come back from our um, potentially large inputs. So if someone passes in negative a trillion, we can relimit that input to within a, a smaller range around zero. Then we just implement the partial fraction expansion ter uh, terms and uh, loop around, add them up, check against the tolerance every iteration of a loop. And then once we're done, we pull everything back off the stack and we leave. The last thing I wanna show you in the, in the code is actually the polynomial estimate for arctangent. And so this is a low order approximation of arctangent, which is simply this approximation that you see here. All it is is, you know, pi over four times z, minus z absolute value of z minus one times this random stuff, where z is the ratio of y to x. And so, as you would imagine, this is not an infinite sum. We're not comparing anything, any tolerance. And so, first off, there is no tolerance being passed in. We're only passing in y and x. We're not passing any tolerance in this expression. Whereas, you know, for the regular arctangent, we did pass in a, uh, a, a y, x, and a tolerance. But uh, yeah, so it's simply a matter of evaluating this expression to give us arctangent. And so it, it's not as elegant as Taylor series, but it is way, way faster. And I'll show you how that looks in a second. So that's the code, very quick cursory look. Now let's take a look at the actual calling examples. And so in every example, there is a shell script that we can execute to run the code as well as the code itself. Let me let me run the code first and we'll see how it what it does. So here you can see um, it's computed and printed out sine of pi and cosine of pi and you can see it gives values that you would expect the answers to be. Now what's going on? How is that working? 
So how does that look? In all these uh, examples, we have to include obviously the relevant sine and cosine and tangent or tangent expressions, uh, you know, trig functions, and whatever we need to print out the results to the screen. And so you can see all we're doing here is we are for the sine function passing in a number x, passing in a tolerance, and calling that function and printing it out. Similarly, we do the same thing for cosine, passing in x, passing in a tolerance calling cosine, printing it out. And here are the values. And we could quickly change, um, you know, the number here to another number if you wanted uh, to get another answer. What is what is sine of 1.14 and cosine? Here are the answers. Before I forget, let me change that back, otherwise that will be committed. Um, example B. Now, this is the same thing, just plotted. And so I've already covered in a previous video how we're plotting stuff. Let me quickly just run through it again here. So we use a lot of stuff. We're using the heap. We're using parameters. This is also from previous videos. Um, we have some things for plotting, scatter plots and things. Um, you can peruse the code if you'd like. Let me run that code. And this code generates the plot that you saw before. Oops, that's my face. Uh, so yeah, sine and cosine, here's the plot. Done, that's that example. Example C, this was tangent. And so the tangent example is same as sine and cosine. All we're doing is we are including the tangent trigonometric function calling that function, printing out the answer. And so if you look at tangent of 0.5, it comes out to be supposedly 0.545. Is that true? Let's check octave really quick. Tangent of 0.5, it is. It's not how you quit. So that's how that works. Come on. Okay. Example D. This is just plotting tangent. If you run this code, you will get the next plot of our examples. This is the tangent plot. Um, actually, you can see tangent is supposed to go to infinity, right? Up positive infinity, negative infinity, right? That's how it works. So at pi over two, it goes to, I believe that's pi over two, it goes to positive infinity. You can see based off my sampling, I didn't quite get to infinity. I only got to 16 or something. Um, but yeah, if we added more points to this, you would, this would spike off the chart. So yeah, that's how that looks. And the last example I wanted to show, oops, was example E. Now, let me just run that really quick so you can see how it looks. This has both the Taylor series approximation for arctangent as well as the polynomial one. And you can see right off the beginning, um, it's way faster. So the arctangent approximation was 81 million cycles for 1 million arctangents, whereas the faster polynomial version was only 18 million. So it was like four plus times faster to use the polynomial estimate versus the actual Taylor series. Um, but you get the same answers, right? So or close. So if you take in our tangent of 0.1 and 0.3, using color series, you get 0.3217. With the faster version, you're getting 0.3211. So not quite exactly the same number, but pretty darn close. Um, for these special cases, you do get the same answer because these are hard coded. So obviously, our tangent of 0, 00 is not a number. Similarly, the faster polynomial version also has that same precaution built in. But yeah, for you know, all the special cases you can see here, we are getting the same answer, a positive pi over two, negative pi over two, zero, pi, all that stuff. We are getting the same answer from one to the other. So that's it. That's the entire episode. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe you became more familiar with how these types of things are evaluated on the computer and how you could write your own 
approximations for these. If you're not into that, just take the code off the suppository. It's all yours, public domain. Um, with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.